Hello everyone, welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. Today, in this episode of Witty Workshop, we're going to be looking at some sample questions for the subject chemistry. So we'll be looking at some questions of chemistry crafted in the model of those asked in the VIT AAA exam, and we'll look at how to solve them effectively. So let's start off with our first question of the day. In the silver plating of copper, KAGCN2 is used instead of AGNO3. The reason is, A, a thin layer of Ag is formed on Cu, B, more voltage is required, C, Ag plus ions are completely removed from the solution, D, less availability of Ag plus ions, as Cu cannot displace Ag from AGCN2 minus ion. So, which of these is the correct answer? Now, the compounds here, KAGCN2 is potassium argento cyanide, and AGNO3 is silver nitrate. And uh, silver plating uses electrolysis in order to plate a copper instrument or utensil with silver. So, option A says a thin layer of Ag is formed on Cu. If we were to use silver nitrate, then copper displaces Ag, or silver, as Cu is more electropositive. So therefore, option A is incorrect. AgNO3 forms a thick layer, or maybe even replace copper by itself, so therefore um, a thin layer of Ag formed on Cu because of AgNO3 is incorrect. Um, option B, more voltage is required. Both of these require electrolysis, and it's more or less the same voltage, so therefore option B is incorrect. Option C, Ag plus ions are completely removed from the solution. <clears throat> well, in the case of potassium argentocyanide, this is not true, so C is incorrect. Option D, less availability of Ag plus ions, as Cu cannot displace Ag from the argentocyanide ion. And that is true because when we use potassium argentocyanide, there is a slow rate of displacement. So since copper is more electropositive than Ag, we would need a complex ion in order to have a slow rate of displacement. And we need a slow rate of displacement because we're just doing electroplating and not complete um, electrolysis. So therefore option D is the correct option. If we use potassium argentocyanide, you get less availability of silver ions because copper cannot displace silver completely from the argentocyanide ion. So therefore option D is the correct option. Now let's look at another question. Nitrosomines are soluble in water. On heating them with concentrated H2SO4, they give secondary amines. This reaction is called Perkin reaction, Sandmeyer's reaction, Fittig reaction, Lieberman nitroso reaction. So nitrosomines which is R2N N times O on reaction with H2SO4 concentrated gives secondary amines. And we need to find out the name of this reaction. The four reactions given are Perkin reaction, Sandmeyer's reaction, Fittig reaction, and Leberman nitroso reaction. Now, Fittig reaction option C um, forms diphenyls from aryl halides. So if you have two aryl halides and then when you mix them with sodium and ether you form diphenyl.
along with sodium halide. So therefore, Fittig reaction does not involve nitrous amines, so therefore option C is incorrect. What about option A, Perkin reaction? Well, Perkin reaction involves benzaldehyde and acetic anhydride. So benzaldehyde plus acetic and hydride in the presence of heat and sodium acetate and this reaction forms cinnamic acid so therefore again no presence of nitrous amines so option A is incorrect option B is Sandmeyer's reaction this is uh, the reaction that helps in forming, um, <clears throat> it helps in forming aryl halides. So when you have benzenamine reacting with NaNO2 slash HX and then CuX it forms the aryl halide on the right. So therefore, again, this does not involve a nitrosamine. There, although there is an amine group, but however, it's not a nitrosamine, it's a benzenamine. So therefore, option B is also incorrect. So therefore, the only correct option is option D, Lieberman nitroso reaction. In Lieberman nitroso reaction, nitroso amines on heating with concentrated H2SO4 gives secondary amines. So option D is the correct option. Now let's look at the final question for today. The energies E1 and E2 of two radiations are 25 electron volts and 50 electron volts respectively. So E1 is 25 electron volts, E2 is 50 electron volts. The relation between their wavelengths lambda 1 and lambda 2 will be lambda 1 equals lambda 2, lambda 1 equals 2 times lambda 2, lambda 1 equals 4 lambda 2, and lambda 1 equals half lambda 2. So how do we solve this question? Well, according to the photoelectric effect, energy is equal to hc over lambda. H is the Planck's constant, C is the speed of light, lambda is the wavelength. So therefore, we can, you know, understand that energy of radiation is inversely proportional to the wavelength. So therefore, when we are, you know, comparing two energies, then E1 over E2 will be equal to lambda 2 over lambda 1. So this is a relation that we can obtain from the earlier relation, E is inversely proportional to lambda. Now we know the values of E1 and E2, 20, 25 and 50 respectively, so we just put the values here. So therefore 25 over 50 gives you lambda 2 over lambda 1. Now 25 goes into 50 twice, so therefore lambda 2 over lambda 1 equals 1 by 2 on cross multiplying we get lambda 1 equals 2 times lambda 2. So therefore, the, the option that is correct is option B, lambda 1 equals 2 lambda 2. If the energies were same, then the, lab, then the two wavelengths would be equal. Then if, say, uh, the energy of E1 was 25 and E2 was 100, then option C would have been correct. And if E1 was 50 and E2 was 25, then option D would have been correct. However, for this particular scenario, um, lambda 1 is equal to 2 times lambda 2. Again, the relation being that using the photoelectric effect, energy of radiation is inversely proportional to the wavelength. So that concludes this episode of the T Workshop. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to Agile Rank Mate your partner in education. 
Now, if you like the video, you can always hit the like button and share it with your friends. And if you want to get the latest updates from our channel, then please don't forget to hit the notifications icon, again, present below the video. So until the next episode, take care, stay alert, bye-bye for now.